When Johnson takes the oath of office tomorrow morning, he will complete a plan set in motion with the teachers union strike more than a decade ago. A rise to power few saw coming, but one he may have predicted. My name is Brandon Johnson, and I can't wait to be sworn in as the next mayor of the greatest city in the world. Ten years before he was elected as Chicago's 57th mayor. Mayor Emanuel represents all that is bad. Brandon Johnson foreshadowed his unlikely rise to the summit of Chicago politics. Candidates will emerge, and who knows, those candidates just might be in this room. He, of course, was in the room. It was a discussion about progressive politics in the era of centrist mayor Rahm Emanuel. Johnson appeared on C-SPAN, telling the audience to focus more on policies and less on politicians. Make sure that the issues are illuminated, and when the candidate emerges, they'll have a platform to run on and not just a party to represent. One day longer, one day stronger. Johnson would find himself on the front lines of a movement that ultimately toppled Chicago's political order. No CTU members will be inside our schools. In 2012, combative teachers union president Karen Lewis led a nine-day teacher strike that captured international headlines. In the end, CTU won a pay increase. But the real victory was in establishing the union as perhaps the strongest force in Chicago politics since the Daily Machine. We're pushing for dignity and respect for our students. Certainly they deserve much better than what they've been offered. Johnson, who taught in the Chicago public schools, was also a union organizer. But in 2012, he was mainly in the background at marches and news conferences. That is, until Emanuel closed 50 low enrollment schools to save money the following year. After the strike, the mayor of Chicago was determined to destroy the CTU. And so what did he do? He moved an agenda to not only close down schools, but to close the largest number of schools in our nation's history. It was then that Johnson emerged as a public, personal face of the stinging school closures. Our neighborhood school was closed. No one asked me whether or not uh, my school should be closed. And so now my sons and the kids that he are, he's growing up with do not have access to a public neighborhood school. It was a reminder that real power over the schools was concentrated on the fifth floor of City Hall. Karen Lewis concluded that the CTU had to have its own representatives in positions of power in city government. She flirted with a mayoral campaign herself, but a brain cancer diagnosis made that campaign untenable. Still, within two years of the school closures, the CTU had helped elect two candidates to the city council, Carlos Ramirez Rosa and Suzanne Sedlowski Garza. In 2018, the union backed Delia Ramirez for state representative. She later introduced the legislation that would wrest control of the schools away from the mayor and give oversight to an elected school board. <laughs> that same year, the union helped Johnson defeat incumbent Richard Boykin to take a seat on the Cook County Board of Commissioners, where he became a staunch ally of powerful board president Tony Preckwinkle. If the mayor wants to talk about being small-minded right now, she needs to look in a mirror. The CTU tangled with Mayor Lori Lightfoot over COVID, contracts, and conditions for years. This is an unnecessary, illegal work stoppage that ignores the data and the science. When she ran for re-election, nine challengers emerged. My public safety plan is an investment plan, and anything short of that is why we need a new mayor. Despite polling in the single digits early on, it was during a marathon march of community forums and debates that Johnson emerged as a likable. Anyone who teaches something in critters, we get to go to heaven for free no matter what. And focused candidate. The reason why we don't have enough police officers is because we're asking them to be social workers. Who could hold his own on the stage. I'm not going to take responsibility for white supremacy. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that we have lived under structural imbalance for a very long time. In the first round of voting, Paul Vallis was the top vote getter, but Johnson surged past the incumbent and the one-time frontrunner, Chewy Garcia, setting up what was viewed as a proxy battle for the direction of the National Democratic Party and a struggle for the soul of the city. And once again, it was foreshadowed at that panel discussion a decade earlier. 
Mayor Daley at that time, took complete control of the public school system. And then he had this in, uh, ingenious idea uh, to put Paul Vallis in charge of the public school system. Um, and if you look at Paul Vallis's record, Paul Vallis is actually the grandfather of privatization and corporate takeover of public schools. Paul Vallis, the well-known former CEO of the Chicago Public Schools, but I can't do it without your help, ran on a record of being a competent administrator and a tough on crime message. Vallis was leading in the polls, but Johnson consolidated public union support and attracted high profile national endorsements from progressive leaders, U.S. Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. He told voters, though, he would not be a CTU puppet. Once I'm mayor of the city of Chicago, I will no longer be a member of the Chicago Teachers Union. I will no longer pay dues to the Chicago Teachers Union. I will have the best job in the world to be an ambassador for a world-class city, especially as we address the critical issues. Johnson's inclusive message inspired young people, and his effective electoral ground game turned out the votes. It carried him to a surprise victory, one that he portended a decade earlier. There's no Superman, there's no hero. The heroes are actually those in the room right here that are on the front line every single day. WGN's special coverage of the big event starts tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. We will bring you live coverage both inside and right outside the arena, as well as in-studio analysis. We'll also have a reaction on the WGN Evening News. You can always read more at WGNTV.com and get breaking news updates on our news app.